Hi guys, uh, I want to give you a small brief about conjugate gradient algorithm and also the Fletcher Reeves. First of all, I want to explain the steps. Uh, in the first step, we are selecting an initial point, we are calculating the gradient. If gradient is zero, then we are stopping. If it's, uh, it's not otherwise, uh, then we are just uh, calculating our first conjugate direction as minus gradient, negative gradient. And in the third step, we are calculating our alpha, fourth step for the calculating the the next point and uh, fifth step um, is just calculating the gradient uh, because you obtain a new point in your iterative algorithm and then we are calculating a beta constant if our gradient is not equal to zero then uh, by beta constant we are just uh, determining our next conjugate direction in the seventh step uh, by writing the formula and we are just increasing the k parameter and go to step 3. This is the conjugate gradient algorithm and as an alternative we can sometimes use Fletcher-Reeves algorithm as we said before. Uh, in general Fletcher-Reeves algorithm will be applied for non-quadratic functions uh, because in non-quadratic functions you need to evaluate your Hessian in each iteration and each formula so it's really a complicated process uh, respect to the computational efficiency so we are saying that Fletcher is in generally uh, will use in non-quadratic functions but of course you are free to use a Fletcher is method in any uh, quadratic functions also what are what is Fletcher is Fletcher is uh, actually follow the same step with conjugate gradient uh, algorithm but the beta constant is a, uh, is a, has a different formula as you see uh, as you see uh, this formula let me show you with my pen uh, I will use pink uh, to distinct the uh, uh, additional video writing okay this is the uh, Fletcher Reeves formula that we use in the beta k and uh, we say that it will be the gradient times gradient for the current iteration over the previous gradient times gradient of course for the appropriate dimension we are writing the transpose of one of the vectors so beta k will be a constant at that time anyway uh, so Fletcher Reeves can be defined by again eight steps but we are using a new beta k constant both conjugate gradient direction and also Fletcher Reeves we can calculate our f um, not f uh, our alpha k constant uh, in a different way instead of using this formula we are able to write our next point in terms of a uh, in terms of an expression of alpha and then we um, after the substitution in the function we will obtain a function like this uh, phi alpha and then uh, we are just minimizing phi alpha function to find the alpha value so this is an alternative finding of alpha okay you can both use these um, blue steps I, I'm writing blue because I write with blue uh, blue steps uh, in conjugate gradient and also Fletcher use anyway we uh, have a homework we have a homework question we already solved in the class and uh, we do it by conjugate gradient but uh, Fletcher Reeves part is a little bit missing so I will start with uh, Fletcher Reeves part and then give you the steps again um, Oh, let me show you what is Fletcher Reeves. Yes, Fletcher Reeves, we write it with purple. And uh, we say that in the Fletcher Reeves, we need to apply the same formulas. So as the conjugate gradient algorithm, we are uh, starting with the same steps. This is our function. We found, uh, we found our gradient. We found our Hessian. And this is our G0. And this is our uh, first conjugate direction. These are the same steps. Um, in the alpha 0, again, you you can apply the same formula to uh, calculate alpha, alpha zero, but uh, as an alternative way, uh, we can calculate alpha by constructing a parametric form. In this case, we are just replacing uh, step three and step four, okay? We are just replacing step three and step four uh, to get rid of um, these um, case. Uh, we are thinking that um, this is the fourth step fourth step we skip uh, step three and we are just going on fourth fourth step anyway uh, we are writing that our x1 point will be the previous point time plus alpha times our first conjugate uh, 
vector. So if you do this, then 0, 0 plus alpha times 3, 0 will be 3 uh, alpha, 0. So you found your new point in terms of alpha, okay? This is the key, key point. And if, uh, if you substitute in your function, if you obtain f of x1, then uh, of course you need to substitute uh, 3 alpha for your x and also you need to substitute 0 for your y in your function. Your function is a two variable function. Anyway, if you do this, then you will obtain a function like this, 9 alpha square minus 9 alpha. So as you see, this is the phi function that we talk about in the theory. So we will just minimize this function. Uh, to minimize this function, we are writing the first order necessary condition and the derivative of the function. Since this is a single variable function, I didn't use the partial derivative notation. I used just ordinary d just be aware of this okay and then d phi over d theta will be uh, 18 alpha minus 9 which will be 0 for the first order necessary condition and this means that alpha is uh, 1 over 2 and as you see we didn't calculate but it's obvious for us the second not theta it's phi sorry uh, d uh, square theta of d alpha square is a positive one this means that the corresponding alpha is generated by as a minimum point anyway Alpha is the 1 over 2. Uh, it's the same as in the conjugate gradient, gradient algorithm. And we apply it, uh, we found it by applying the formula. Okay, so this is an alternative way of finding alpha. If you don't want to remind the alpha formula, then you can just focus on this part and just write uh, your next point, I mean step 4, uh, in terms of alpha, substitute in the function, and you will, uh, you will have a, a single variable function uh, in terms of alpha. So so you will just take the derivative of it and find the alpha value, okay? And after finding the alpha, <coughs> let me show you. Um, actually, this is the step. Alpha is 1 over 2. We found the same by an alternative method. Uh, so by using this, now we are ready to write our x1 point and we obtain the same point by using this alpha. And then if you calculate the new point, then you need to calculate your gradient. And if, uh, if you substitute the values, then you will see that your gradient is not zero. This means that you need to continue to the calculation. So next step is calculation the beta zero constant, first beta constant. And uh, in the Fletcheries, this is different. We are not using this formula, okay? This formula is related to conjugate gradient algorithm. And as you see, it consists of lots of uh, Hessian matrix, but uh, in general, we are applying Fletcheries in non-quadratic, so we are getting rid of our Hessian matrix, okay? So anyway, as an alternative way, we will find our beta zero by the um, formula of Fletcher. Reeves. Uh, the formula of Fletcher Reeves was the current gradient times gradient over the previous gradient times gradient and with the transpose of course and so this is your current gradient and this is your previous gradient if you do the calculation again you will find your beta as 1 over 4 which is the same as in uh, conjugate gradient algorithm since your function is a quadratic one, we found the same beta value, okay? But of course, in non-quadratic, uh, it will be different in uh, any way. Uh, so this was the different case, uh, different uh, aspect of Fletcher Reeves after calculating the beta constant. Let me continue with this one. Uh, you will just calculate your uh, d1 um, conjugate direction vector, next conjugate direction vector, and this will be our uh, d1. After calculating d1, again, you will calculate your alpha by uh, following the steps of the algorithm. And again, we apply the formula, but uh, as an alternative, you can apply uh, the other technique uh, I explained before. I mean, just writing uh, the next point in terms of alpha, substituting in the function, and then minimizing a single variable function, okay? But uh, again, if you do this, again you will face with the same alpha value uh, by using these alpha value you will find your next point x2 uh, which will be 2 comma minus 1 <clears throat> since we are applying a quadratic function to conjugate gradient and also Fletcher Reeves the second iteration will give you the optimum point this um, is guaranteed by the algorithm, but we are just doing this in the quadratic function. If you are faced with a non-quadratic function, then this is not the case. In the second iteration, you need to continue to the process. So uh, in each case, quadratic or non-quadratic, I advise you to check your gradient for the points, okay? And you will be sure about your calculations is correct or not. It's a good way. Uh, so... 
this is our g2 which is which means that our gradient value we are just substituting the values in our gradient vector and we are calculating that our gradient is zero this means that stopping criterion of the algorithm is satisfied and this means that you found the optimum so we say that x2 is x2 star which means that optimum okay that's all um, sometimes uh, we are using fletcher or sometimes we are uh, using conjugate gradient you already know that i give you for uh, two additional algorithm polak Ribeira and hansen Stiefel, but uh, you don't need to remind the formula, but the formula for conjugate gradient and also Fletcher Reeves is a must for you, okay? You need to remind the formula of that. That's all. Take care of yourself. Have a good day.